In order to understand how to use D3, it is important to understand the way data is bound to document elements. Let's get started. When you go to the D3 website, you will see that they give you a snippet to include D3 quickly into your project. I will be using CodePen.io for these demos, so I will copy this link into my HTML. From here, I will be writing exclusively in JavaScript, so I will expand that out. Now, I am going to play around with the D3 API. If you are familiar with jQuery, some of this will be familiar to you. I'd like to start by creating an unordered list of items and append it to the body. D3 uses CSS selectors much like jQuery, so selecting the body is getting a reference to the body element in the DOM. Now, I can just append an unordered list to the body. I'll keep a reference to it so that I can add items to it. Adding items is as simple as appending items to the list and setting the text. Notice how my browser is responding to my changes. I can add another one and it gets added. You get the idea. In reality, I want to add items that are bound to data. I'll remove these list items and define some simple data. D3 uses a paradigm of data binding based on set mathematics, where we join data to elements. It feels odd at first, but it will make sense. I need to select all the items in the list. This set is currently empty, but I will bind the data to the empty set. Next, I am defining what to do when items enter the set. Basically, we need to say that given a set of list items, when data enters the set, we want to create new list items. In this case, we want to append new items to the set and set the text. I can give it a hard-coded value if I want, but in this case, it really makes sense to bind it to the data. The text function can take a function which is past the datum which is being bound. In this case, we just want to return the value. Since we aren't doing anything with the data, a shortcut is to just pass the string function. As you can see, the data has now been bound to the list items. This principle is the core of how d3.js works. I like to show you how new data is handled so the set mathematics may become a bit more clear. I am going to pull the set math into an update function. Next, I am going to add a button to the document so that when we click the button, a new datum is added to the collection. I need to call update again. Consider what is happening now. I select list items. This time, there's a list of five items. When I apply the data with six items, only one datum actually enters the system. That entered item gets appended and the remaining five stay there. Every time I add a new item, it gets appended to the end. To illustrate the opposite, I will add another button for removing an item. I will pop an item from the data and call update. 
Nothing will happen, however, because I haven't told the bound set what to do when data exists. Here, I will just tell it to remove the item from its parent. This enter exit update pattern is extremely important to understanding how data is transformed into visualizations with D3. It is not the last time you will see this pattern, so if you're still a bit, a, a bit confused about it, don't worry. It'll click eventually. <laughs>